This is the fluid distribution of colloids versus crystalloid fluids. Crystalloids, like saline or lactated ringers, distribute in a 1 to 3 ratio between the intravascular and interstitial space. So most of it ends up in the interstitial space and leaves the intravascular space. Only 20 to 25% of crystalloids stay in the intravascular space after one hour's time. Colloids, on the other hand, stay 85, up to 85% intravascular due to their oncotic pressure effect. There are exceptions, of course. If the capillary endothelium is damaged, up to 50% of the colloids can leak to the interstitium. The clinical effects of this are that crystalloids cause more peripheral edema and they produce greater urinary output. You need three to four times as much crystalloid volume versus colloids for the same intravascular effect. So if your goal is intravascular expansion, colloids do a much better job for the same unit volume. There's no mortality difference between these two fluids, colloids and crystalloids, in traumas, burns, or surgeries. And crystalloids are generally preferred first line because they're cheaper and more readily available. There are some specific uses. Crystalloids are better for total body fluid deficits and dehydration when you don't mind it going into the interstitial space, for instance. Colloids are better for maintaining intravascular volume, as we said. Hypertonic solutions can be useful in traumatic brain injury, and modern colloid albumin is very safe for coagulation. This is in comparison to older synthetic colloids like starches or gelatins that had risk of renal failure and coagulopathy.